Hey, I'm Joel Wanasek. I'm a mixer and the co-founder of NailTheMix.com, one of the coolest places to learn how to mix heavy music in the entire world. And today we're going to break down an absolute banger of a heavy mix, something that I think really stands out as a little bit different and special amongst the pack. And that is Kill the Cult by Decapitated. I absolutely love this song. I love this mix. And this is done by the legendary Daniel Bergstrand, who is one of the best of the best of the best. And I feel like continually sets the bar for great sounding production. So let's dissect this mix. Let's take a look at this and see what makes this mix really incredible. We got to start out with the drums. This is what Daniel is just absolutely so famous for. So first things first, one thing that immediately grabs me and gets my interest in this is how organic and dynamic these drums are, even though the kick and snare are samples, right? Like you can really really feel the natural vibe, you know? So pay attention to that. Like the attack of the kick, the attack of the snare, you know, the tone of the kick and snare, they're very, very unique sounding amongst modern metal drums. If you listen carefully, you can really hear the multi-velocities, especially on the kick, and you can hear that there's left and right foot because of the variance in both the kick attack and the bottom end fluctuation of the kick, which is really, really cool. Again, a lot of people in heavy music are just one-shotting it, which is cool. You know, it's a sound. This is a little bit different. You know, these are this is a very, very multi-sample, multi-velocity kind of thing. And what I love about it is, like I said, the samples aren't overly hyped, yet this mix still sounds super aggressive, which is crazy because by modern metal standards, these drum samples kind of sound uh, that he's using in this mix sound kind of nice. You know what I mean? Like they're not like overly transient modified. They're not overly hyped. They're not overly bright. They're not overly subby. You know, they're not like this larger than life. These are like really, really tucked in, but they still sound so aggressive. And that, that to me is like a feat to be able to do something that's natural, but really, really aggressive and appropriate. And again, here's something unique. So let's listen to the kick and snare real carefully. Now. So where's the kick drum in the frequency spectrum? Listen to the bass and the kick here very carefully. I hear the kick drum above the bass, meaning the kick doesn't have a ton of subs in it. A lot of, you know, the bass is driving the mix. The bass is really like, and frequency wise is below the kick drum and it's driving and pushing a lot of the energy. You know, the kick doesn't have a ton of sub, but it has a lot of natural length to it. One thing that Daniel does in his techniques, because I know I've seen it, he does a lot of room sampling and a lot of room in his samples that kind of gives it this cohesive sound. So that's where the kick drum is. And listen to the top of the kick and the top of the guitar. And I love how the attack of the kick and the guitars are just kind of just sitting up there and they just punch together in unison and make this really, really awesome sound. Uh, the snare's got a really cool sound to it and a really cool room. Let me fast forward a little bit and listen to this. It's such a cool room that this is recorded in, you know what I mean? It's got this length to it, but it sounds tight, but it sounds super long and ambient at the same time, you know what I mean? It's like the perfect glued blend, which is pretty sweet. All right, cymbals, let's listen to these. Again, really smooth, you know, they're not overly bright, they're not overly hyped, you know, they've got a great upper mid-range pop to them, and, you know, they're just kind of sitting there. You know, I don't hear anything that's, like, super filtered off. He's definitely using a lot of the full range of the cymbal. The cymbals still have a nice crispness to them, and they're kind of balanced, you know, it's not like this is a cymbal forward mix or a kick and snare forward mix, like, his drum kit is very, very, very balanced. All right, let's focus now on guitars. Now, given that Vogue is, like, one of the greatest guitar players in metal and has one of the most ferocious right hands there is. It wouldn't be unexpected to assume that the guitar tone on a, like a decapitated thing wasn't going to be anything short of mind-blowingly good. And I think this guitar tone is sick. So let's focus in on this. And just listen to how tight that guitar tone is on those chugs. You know, I love the upper brightness to it. It's not hissy, right? It's got an upper mid-range crunch to it. It's nice and bright, but it's like super tight. And the chugs on the guitar, like the, you know, are so tight, so nice. You know, they don't have a ton of sub in them. And it just really drives this mix. Like it's a great mid-range. 
Balance wise, the guitars are also very forward. Okay, so now pay attention to the bass and the guitar relationship. Hold on, we get a guitar tone solo here. The bass is actually super loud in this mix and it's got a lot of attack, but because the drums and the EQ frequency of the guitars uh, and the guitars are pretty forward and dominant, what happens with the bass is you don't really notice how much bass level there is in this mix until you actually just focus with your ear on the bass level and listen to it. You know, the bass has got a great upper attack, again, that just pockets like perfectly in with the guitars and the top of the kick and really drives it. He's totally nailed the EQ on this. It's crazy how good it is. Now that is one punchy bass. It's crazy to me. Now I know Daniel mixes on an SSL duality console and um, you know, when you have an SSL, there's a way that it kind of separates things out and brings the mids forward and kind of locks like your kick and bass and gives them this energy. And like, I can really hear that sonic signature on it. Like the way that the top end locks and like the mid forward aggression, like that is the sound of SSL. So pay attention to that. Now. That SSL is just driving so much aggression and it's super sick. Lead guitar zone sounds good. It's super forward, but not like, hey, I'm the, you know, it's a solo, right? It's up there, but it's not like really push. And it's pretty dry too, which is kind of cool. Like everything in this mix is dry, but it sounds big and ambient. In a, you know what I mean? It's kind of like a dichotomy where it's like, it sounds big, but it also sounds really dry and aggressive. So uh, it's very interesting how the ambient choices in this mix are laid out. All right, let's dig into some vocals. To my ear, it sounds like you use like an SM7 or something like that. Just like the mid-range frequency curve of it and like the type of top end. I could be wrong. I'd be surprised if I'm not, but it sounds like an SM7. You know, the, the vocal is very forward. It's kind of, like I said, it's kind of dry, you know, in terms of the ambience. It's like the ambience cohesion in this mix is really, really cool. That's something to think about. Like if your vocal ambience doesn't match your drum ambience, doesn't match your, you know what I mean? Like everything kind of needs to gel and blend. So the way that this is done on the vocal is really cool. Again, it sounds very like, upfront, present, you can't really hear the effects on it, but I bet if you hit mute, you'd be like, ooh, it feels out of place. Vocals are doubled. Sometimes tripled or quadded on those accents. And I like the upper frequency that he's picked to boost. It's not sibilant. It's like right around that range though. And it's peaked there and it's kind of the vocal is just sitting right on top of the attack of the guitar and the bass and the top of the kick drum. Yeah, this mix is really amazing. You know, what really, really gets me going about this mix and just inspires me is like how much dynamic movement there is compared to like so many other more modern metal tracks where everything kind of just sounds like plastic and like it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't have any movement to it when you crank it up. When you crank this mix up, it feels great. Big surprise, it was done on an SSL. But like, there's a, there's a movement to it and a dynamic energy and like a certain width and an aggressiveness to it, even though it sounds natural, which is like mind blowing. So I just love how this is sonically branded, how this is different than a lot of things that I've heard. It's a phenomenal mix. Bravo, Daniel. Like just, this thing is incredible. So. I'm going to wrap it up with that on this. If you've got some other songs you want me to break down or react to, please leave them in the comments. If you like this type of content, click the subscribe notification bell and give me a like, please. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, if you want to learn how to mix, head over to nailthemix.com. You can also follow me on TikTok if you want mixing little tips and things like that. I'm always trying to talk about real stuff and teach real mixing concepts and get you to think like an actual mixer. So that's at Joel Wanasek.